Hello friends! Welcome back to the channel today and I'm going to talk to you today about the myths and the facts of foster care. So stick around for all that. Hi, my name is Winter Hendrickson. Welcome back to my channel. I have four children that I adopted from the foster care system. I love them so much. It's been awesome. And just the other day we realized we've had 18 kids come through our home in the past seven years um, as foster parents and um, it's been such a ride. And now we're on a completely different journey but like still advocating for kids in foster care. Um, but we are adopting from China as well. So that's our kind of life story in about 15 seconds. So. If you like all that, hit the subscribe button um, and we're gonna get into this video. Man, I'm so excited about this video. And also I want to apologize for, I don't need to apologize, but I will, because I do feel bad for abandoning YouTube for the last two weeks. Yep, two weeks. I, um, so yeah, I was right in the middle of, towards the end of Adoption Awareness Month and um, I got sick really bad. Um, we had that foster placement of those three boys and it just took the life out of me guys so and I also if you guys don't know this I have a full-time job I work in retail surprise a foster mom that works full-time it's crazy I know um so during the retail too in retail I'm, I'm in a management position I work you know 45 50 hours a week so it was getting kind of crazy and then I came in with a sinus infection had a headache so YouTube got cut so sorry I cut you I love you I'm back I'm here I'm excited about this subject. This was actually a video for adoption awareness. Um, so we'll just keep doing it and then however many more I can find for you, I will keep keep putting them out there. So this isn't necessarily a adoption awareness video. It's more of a foster care awareness video. Um, but I know a lot of people do adopt children through the foster care system as we did as well. Um, so it's a great avenue um, if you wanna go that route. Um, it's great. So. I personally recommend it. <laughs> so let's get into these facts. I actually got these facts from our Department of Social Services website. Um, they actually have sheets for people they hand out at events. Um, and I've seen these around, these myths and fact sheets, and people are always surprised by them. So I'm going to read it to you, and then I'm going to commentate my opinion about it, or if it's true, or, or what exactly that means. So the first myth here about foster care is foster parents must be married and must also have children. Um, that is in fact a myth. Um, and the fact about it is foster parents do not need to marry, be married and they do not need to have children. I know a lot of um, single moms that have been foster parents. I know one single dad that is a foster dad um, and it's not uncommon. So, um, and also you don't have to have children in your home. You don't already have to be a parent become a foster parent as we we did not I was 24 years old when I became a foster mom and when my son came to live with us my sons um that's when I became a mom for the first time they made me a mom so that's that is a myth fun fact um yeah you can be single and that's awesome I think it's a good those women are powerful I'm just saying if you ever meet a single foster mom you're like whoa you are a powerful woman I love that. <laughs> a myth would be older people cannot be foster parents. Um, that is a myth. Um, the fact is foster parents must be at least 21 years old and there is no other age requirements other than that. So you can be whatever age, you just have to be 21. Um, I know if you want to adopt a child, I think this is, I think it's also for foster care. So don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure there has to be a 10 year age gap between the parent and the child. Um, me and my son have a 14 year age gap, so it's pretty close, but if you still have it, um, I remember that being the requirement. And then when we were first licensed, and like I said, I was 24, I was only licensed between zero and 14, and then just moved up in age until I turned 28, and then we had all age groups in there. Um, I think it's interesting though, um, we tell the agency, like, we prefer children that are school aged kids, um, that that's something that we really just prefer. Um, but we do have our license from zero to 18 because just in case, like just, I mean, 
we don't necessarily want toddlers, but just this year we took two toddlers, you know? So like, it just, you know, it just depends on the circumstance. You just never know what you'll say yes to. So you just want to have your, your home study and your license open to whatever, whatever God has for you. That's the way I say it. Um, cause you never know when you want to say yes. Um, uh, let's see here. Okay. Here's the myth. People with police reports are automatically ineligible to become foster parents. This is a myth. Um, but the fact is to ensure the safety of children in foster care, potential foster families are screened for past criminal activities. Convictions are reviewed by the Division of Child Protection Services on a case by case basis. So that being said, um, if you have a like history of abusing children, I don't know if they would let you be a foster parent. My guess is probably not. But um, if you have a history, you had like one small incident when you were younger of something that popped up, they, they might be okay with it. It just, they do screen you, they do talk to you, they have conversations with you, they do meet you in person and you, they'll find out these things. So just good to be honest about these things um, if you have some stuff in your background. To become a foster parent, a family must make a certain amount of money. This is a myth. Um, the fact is, a family must be able to support itself financially outside of foster care payments. So that's a interesting statement. Um, so when we became foster parents, they um, that's the fact. Actually, so they have to be able to, you know secure themselves but honestly when we became foster parents we weren't making that much money <laughs> we were fairly poor but we we were on a budget and we were able to show them that we can support our family of me and chad on our own and our bills everything got paid every month um you had, you had to write a budget out for them so that they know that you can pay all your bills pretty easy um i know for our china adoption that's not true at all you do have to make a certain amount of money. You do have to have a certain amount of assets. It's a total different ball game than the foster care system. So that's just different. It's just a different way of doing things. And that's set up by the Chinese government. So not the United States government. All right. So another myth would be people become foster parents just for the money. This is definitely a myth. All right. So the fact is Foster parents are reimbursed monthly to help meet the initial needs of children placed in their care. Foster payments are intended to cover the needs of a child placed in care. And I know that um, I have the most views on my channel about this, and that's the video called "What Does Foster, How Much Does Foster Parents Get Paid? And I can put that in the link below, but I can just tell you the same information right here for you in about 30 seconds. So, um... I like to call this a reimbursement because it does help. It does help. So you get paid about paid about $15 a day per child in your home. And I think this is standard across the United States. Some states it's like 20, 25, other states it's like 13, 14. So it just depends on what state you're living in. But in South Dakota, it's I think it's $18 a day right now. Um, it's gone up since I made that video and it's about 500, 550 a month. Um, if you have them for the whole month. Um, but that's to cover all the needs of that child. So when a child comes into foster care, oftentimes um, they have about 30 seconds to grab some stuff for that child and bring them to your house. Um, and you are, re you are to take care of their needs with this reimbursement. So food, diapers, clothing, all that comes from this reimbursement. And I'm so grateful for that, a bed. Like there's so many things if they need um, like money for for milk at school or like any kind of school things like school pictures, that is your responsibility as a foster parent. So I don't know how people make money off of that. I I think that it would be a not a wise job, but I do think it is awesome that our government does does that. I just told my husband today. I was like, it's crazy that like they will pay us to help meet a need in our community um, while parents are getting better. I just think that's crazy and I just love that about our government and about our state and I just think it's great. So, um, and I think it really does help the kids. And I, I haven't met a foster parent that just lives off of that money. Like I said, they have to have money to support themselves. So 
that kind of opened a can of worms to that one. Um, but it is intended to cover the needs of the child. So, and then we also, we set aside some money every month for the children um, for their future. So when they graduate, we will give them money to start their life off. So they can go to college or buy a house, whatever they want to do with that money that is up to them, that's their money. So that's what we do. We don't, you don't have to do that though. You can use it to cover utilities. You can do whatever you want with the money. It's your money. So that you got for that child. So that is what it is. So there you go. Myth number, whatever number, I don't know. They're not numbered. Okay. Foster parents must own a large expensive home in order to meet licensing standards. That's a myth. Um, the fact is there is no licensing standard regarding the size of a foster, a potential foster parent's home. Licensing standards that do exist are in place are to ensure that the home provides a safe environment for the children in foster care. And I do think that is true. So we don't live in an expensive house. Um, I can just tell you, we paid $60,000 for our house about 10 years ago. Hopefully it's worth a little more now since we fixed it up a lot, but it's only a four bedroom home. Um, and we have a lot of people living in here. Um, we have six people, soon to be seven people living in here, and we'll still be foster parents able to take children. So that gives you any inclination about how big of a home you need to take foster care kids. It's not bad at all. Um, you also, I've heard of people living in apartments and being foster parents, so it, it doesn't matter what size of home you have, for sure. Myth, each child in foster care must have their own bedroom. Okay. Nope, <laughs> this is not true. But it, what is true, here's, here's what they say is a fact, and I, this is true. Children in foster care can share bedrooms. However, children over the age of six can only share a room with a child of the same gender. So when they're younger, um, they can share a bedroom up to age six, and then after six, they want the same genders in the bedroom. So our boys, they share a room, um, and that's fine. Um, we've had foster kids come in the past and share with our daughter and their son, and that was fine as well. Um, I think toddlers can um, be in the same room with the adult up to the age of two, but they cannot share a bed, so no co-sleeping. So, and actually, um, foster parents are not even allowed Actually, no one in the home is allowed to be on the, the child's bed in the home. That is their sacred space, and so we give them that space to have for their own. I think that's a great role for always. Um, it's a little tricky sometimes, so, but that's their space, so I, I think it's great. All right, here's another myth for you. Foster parents must pay for medical expenses if they are caring for a child in foster care. That is a myth. Fact, children who are placed in the foster care system in this, by the South Dakota Department of Social Services receive medical coverage through the department. Foster parents are not responsible for the medical expenses of children in foster care. So we actually get um, medical insurance cards and we have not had a problem. The only time we ever had a problem is when we were traveling out of state and we went to this really super local um, doctor's office because the town was so small and they were really weird about our South Dakota insurance but um the Department of Social Services paid for that so we just paid for it and they reimbursed us it was no big deal um our son was having an allergic reaction so we had to take him in so that one was but other than that we've always had everything paid for and our daughter had a surgery everything was just taken care of and all all of their um, meds everything was taken care of so it was no problem at all we actually have an amazing um, Department of Services up there. They get that card to us right away after the kid comes into care, which is great. Um, a myth would be birth parents can drop in and visit their children in foster care at any time. That is a myth. Um, the fact is the family, the child's family service specialist approves all parental visitation plans and coordinates those plans in advance with the parents and the foster parents. So, um, those are all arranged visits. Um, most of the time they are supervised visits um, up until a certain point and then they're called unsupervised visits um, with the child. Um, but they can't just come over to your house whenever they want. Um, they just can't. So um, another myth would be foster parents that work outside of the home must pay for the child's um, daycare expenses. 
All right, that's a myth. And then the fact here, this is the last fact here. If the child care is provided by a registered family care, daycare, or a licensed child care center, child care cost can be reimbursed. The child care plan must meet reimbursement criteria as established by the children division of child care services. So we've actually had children um, in foster care that did go to daycare um, and they ended up going to a licensed in-home registered daycare provider and then the state paid for it all. We actually rarely even crossed hands with them. It was very, very easy and slick. Um, and then recently we um, had a kid and they went to another foster parent in town for daycare um, that was, um, they had their own daycare business but they weren't registered but since they were a foster parent we were allowed to send them there and they just got um, foster care daycare. It's kind of a thing. So it's kind of a way around the rules um, which is great too because they're safe and the child can be there because they are a foster parent. So this video got way longer than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was just going to be a quick video here and pop on with you guys but once I get talking, I get talking. I miss you guys so much. I just love this little community that we're starting. You guys have the best questions. Um, I'm so excited about 2020 because we get to adopt our child in 2020. And I'm, I'm going to give an, a China adoption update here soon so you guys know what's going on in her life. I know I've been a little bit MIA, but it's okay. I'm a mom. I'm busy. Maybe that all won't always be the case. And um, I can be on here more in the future, but um, right now that's kind of where it's at. Um, it's just life. So anyways, I love you guys. Like I said, hit that subscribe button if you want to be a part of this community. Um, I do videos very like a couple times a week about um, foster care and adoption and sometimes my kids pop on very randomly. So you guys don't want to miss any of these things that are happening and when we go to China as well. So love you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.